Hey, what's up everybody? It's William. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been quite a while since I last posted on my YouTube channel. I've just been, you know, crazy busy with my work schedule, but I'm happy to be back here and happy to connect with my subscribers and my followers. So in today's video, I wanted to go ahead and talk about how to be okay with people not liking you. And the reason why I wanted to touch on this topic is because autism is a very misunderstood topic and there's a lot of people who, who don't really like people with autism or people who are bitter or resentful towards autism because people are cruel towards what they don't understand and people often don't like what they don't understand. So that's why I want to share with you some ways on how you can be okay with people not liking you so that you can gain better self-esteem, confidence, that way you can grow towards having a happier life. See, as an individual with autism, I used to always believe that I was cursed. Like, I was created just so that people would have something to hate. I have always spent a lot of my time and energy trying to reason with people, trying to understand why they don't like me, and trying to get them to like me, trying to get them to understand me better, and I would often sacrifice a lot. And all I was doing was just draining myself and driving myself bonkers. So I had to come to terms with how people feel about me is out of my control. Now, some of you may or may not be thinking that it's not so much of people that don't like me that's the problem. It's what people do because they don't like me. Like, you could interview for a job and get denied for that job because the person in charge doesn't like you. Or you could be fired from a job because your boss doesn't like you. Or you could have a coworker who doesn't like you go and complain to your boss who ends up siding with that coworker. You might deal with people who pick on you and bully you because they don't like you. Or you could be competing for something or working towards a goal and someone who doesn't like you may intentionally get in the way and make it difficult for you to achieve what it is you're competing for or what you are working towards. You may also be thinking that it's not so much of strangers that don't like me, it's people who started off liking me that I later considered as a friend, but then eventually they started acting resentful towards me and won't tell me why. Believe me, I get that. That's something that I struggle with very often, if not on a daily basis. When I have run-ins with those type of people, I would always check in with them and ask, is everything okay? Because you've been acting this way towards me. And usually they would deny having a problem with me and just say that they're acting moody because they're having a bad day. But you don't see them acting that way towards anybody else when you're not around. See, it's shocking and hard to accept changes like that because we, as autistic individuals, are not used to sudden changes. You got to understand that a true, honest person who respects you would have the decency to tell you if you bothered them in any way or if they have a problem with something that you did, rather than just denying that they don't have a problem and pretending that everything is okay when in fact it's not and they're gossiping about you behind your back to others. I mean, let's face it, do we really want those type of people in our lives? So with all this being said, let's go ahead and explore ways on how we as autistic individuals can be okay with people not liking us. And I hope that this video is helpful and that it teaches you something. One is that we simply have to acknowledge that there's going to be people in our lives who do not like us and that we have no control over it. There's also going to be people in our lives who refuse to be honest about how they feel and we can't force them to be upfront about it. Believe me, I've tried that. I have pestered people over and over again when I suspected that something is going on, like they have a problem with me or that they're avoiding me and they refuse to admit it. But when I was persistent, all I was doing was making more people in that person's circle dislike me. If any of you have watched Laura Cleary on YouTube or TikTok, she has a video where she is addressing toxic people. See that toxic person? We're walking the other way. See that? There's also one of my favorite prayers, the serenity prayer. It says, 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I also posted this question on Reddit asking how to be okay with being disliked, and there was a person who uh, commented saying, we're subject to hostility for no reason, and it's painful and humiliating. The most important thing is to simply admit it, because if you're in denial, you can be driven to do self-destructive things, which would ultimately make things worse, and you would end up what this person referred to as a shame spiral. There's a lot of people, before they realized that they were in fact autistic, that had bad self-stigmatizing habits, and that made people dislike them. So now we just have to simply acknowledge that we're autistic and there's people who are not going to like us for being autistic and that's okay. We also got to realize that there's people who are not on the autism spectrum that put up with people who don't like them for unknown reasons or reasons that aren't even valid. There's people who like to complain. There's people who like to have problems and people who like to have something to dislike. It's stupid, but what can we do about it? You just got to get in the habit of saying to yourself that it is what it is and there's nothing that I can do about it. Now, some of you may be thinking that there was something that you could have done to prevent the person from disliking you or something that you should not have done that caused the person to dislike you. And if that is the case, well, there's nothing you can really do to undo that, no matter how many times you beat yourself up about it. Now, you could apologize to the person and offer to make amends if, in fact, you did do something to hurt them. But whether they choose to forgive you or not and allow you to make it up to them is up to them. I used to think that showing the people I've hurt or supposedly hurt, that if I showed them how bad I feel, they would be sympathetic enough to forgive me and reconcile with me. And I used to allow people to beat me up to show them how bad I feel. And that hopefully they would realize that now we're even and we can reconcile. But all I was doing was just making matters worse for me and giving more power to them. See, people may have a right to dislike you, but they don't have a right to mistreat you. And here's another thing. Even if you did do something that caused the person to dislike you, well, then you got to ask yourself, did you learn anything from this? We all got to learn how to take setbacks as learning experiences. And if the person who doesn't like you has a stupid reason for disliking you, then you just got to ask yourself, is that really the type of person you want to have in your life? See, it's unreasonable to expect everybody to like us, no matter how hard we try or no matter how bad we want them to. And it's also important to remember that we ourselves have people in our life that we don't like. Hopefully that gives a little insight. Another thing is to embrace who you are and not care what other people think. Learn to be perfectly happy with your own company and have plenty of hobbies and interests to occupy your time. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Keanu Reeves states that he's single and not lonely. I buy myself clothes. I take myself out to eat. Once you learn how to enjoy your own company, company becomes an option, not a necessity. Next is a no-brainer, and that is to stay busy. There's a lot of things that you can do to stay busy. Some of the things I like to do to stay busy is work out. And if anybody follows me on Instagram, they may see me posting on my stories occasionally of some of the workouts that I'm doing. See, back in summer of 2019, I started my fitness journey because I had put on a lot of weight and I was really ashamed of the way I was looking and the fact that I was not fitting into some of my clothes. And as time went on, I started to see more and more progress being made to my image and because I was making such progress, that gave me a goal to look forward to and to keep working towards. And that's the nice thing about goals too, is that you have something to set your mind to rather than just dwelling on problems that are upsetting for you, like people disliking you 
Plus, there's so many benefits to working out. Working out is a great stress reliever. You sweat off endorphins and you develop a better mindset. Other things I like to do is uh, be creative. Again, some of you may see me being creative with video or photo editing. I always amaze myself when I discover how talented I really am and some of the cool things or silly things that I can come up with. I also like to go for a walk with my dog. It's really good to get outside, experience outdoor nature, and get some vitamin D into my system. Other things that you can do to stay busy is journal. If you're building up a lot of thoughts inside your mind and you can't cope with them, write them down. You can also share your thoughts with somebody you trust and somebody that cares about you. Another good thing to do to stay busy is reading a book. There's a lot of self-help books that I have read that have really helped me transform my life. And I'm not talking about reading a book from a phone screen. I'm talking about reading hard copies. Another is daily affirmations. These are positive reminders to help encourage you and motivate you. On my phone, I have the paid version of the motivation app so that every once in a while, I will receive like an encouraging or motivational quote. You can also go to Pinterest and look up positive affirmations that's geared towards whatever it is you're facing or dealing with. TED Talks is also another great source to go to for positive affirmations. There are a lot of speakers on TED Talks that talks about the problems that they are facing and how they had to deal with it. And some of that includes dealing with people who don't like them. It's always so inspiring and encouraging to see and listen to like life testimonies of other people who have hit rock bottom and then rose up. Now, some of you may be thinking, that this person is different than you, and they're not facing the struggle that you're currently facing. Yes, that may be true, but the point of the message that they are delivering is that everybody hits rock bottom once in a while in their life, or at some point in their life. But that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. Now, what if you're dealing with someone in person who doesn't like you, like a coworker? Well, if you run into that problem, you got to remind yourself why you're there. You're there because you need to work, you need to support yourself. But if the coworker is giving you a hard time and making it difficult for you to work, then you need to take that up with someone higher. Or if it's a social setting that you regularly go to and you're dealing with a guest or somebody that doesn't like you who's giving you a hard time. Again, take that up with the host or the person in charge. Well, guys, that's all I had to say for this topic. I hope that it helps. I hope that it helps and that you learned something. Because, to be honest, as I was writing out the script for this YouTube video, I myself had learned things in the process. See, I may be educating my subscribers who are watching my videos, but I'm also educating myself, too, as I make these videos. And some of the things I mentioned in this video to work on are things that I myself need to work on too. So please, don't watch my videos assuming that I'm an expert at everything because I'm really not. I am a struggling learner just like you who always has room for growth. And please everybody, understand that you are not alone in your struggles. I am there with you as well. Now, if you haven't already, please be sure to give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next video.